Good morning. This is Carlos Castillo, original from um, Calgary, Alberta. And now we are um, here with Mr. Aiwasa. He is an economic development officer from the city of Brooks. That's right. Perfect. Good morning, Mr. Aiwasa. How are you today? Good. Very good. It's a little bit of a cool, rainy day, but it's, it's nice to be in here uh, talking to you. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to have a wonderful interview today because we would like to share with our community uh, more about City of Brooks. Mm -hmm. So yesterday we had the privilege to have in the same spot uh, Mr. John Petrie, okay. Mayor yes. uh, Petrie, uh, and we spent beautiful time with him also. And, and, and just because really we would like to learn more and more about the city. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we're going to start just uh, talking a little bit about you, where you're coming from, your background, sure. share with us, uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, I was mentioning just before we came on air, I actually was born and raised here in Brooks, so, uh, you know, I'm very familiar, I'm very familiar with uh, the area around the studio here, uh, having grown up very nearby. Um, so, my family had a family business here for uh, many years, it was a printing and, and sign making business. Um, so, I, I worked in that area with my family, uh, my father and my brother, for quite a few uh, years. Um, but more recently, um, you know, with uh, business changing, my father had passed away, my brother was looking to retire, um, it was time to look for a change. And this position came up that I'm in now as the Economic Development Officer for the Brooks Newell region. And um, it was quite the shift for me, uh, personally. Um, it was a, a big change, but it w it's, it's been a nice change for me over the last few years, working with economic development. I think I brought to the role uh, understanding of what business people need and the potential for our area as well. So um, I kind of like to bring my business experience into this role and, and help support businesses now and in, in our area. Wow, that, that's very good. And, and when, so it's a big change. And mm -hmm. sometimes we need to face those changes in our life. And, 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 and the thing now is, mm, so how you are, mm, so based on your experience, mm -hmm. how you put all the experience right now and, and your position? Yeah, so, um, you know, I do have a background. I have a business degree from the University of Calgary. Um, so, uh, you know, combine that with my marketing experience and, and my business experience. I can go into businesses and, and talk to them and, and see what kind of issues that they're having. And, and there are a lot of challenges right now. Uh, you know, coming out of COVID, there were a lot of, um, you know, um, barriers put up in front of businesses, but uh, we've been able to work through them. So I think um, my experience uh, in that business is just something that I can relate back to them and, and, and know what they're, they're facing, whether it's um, finding people to work, workforce development, um, marketing, uh, getting out to the customers, and new and innovative ways of, of selling your products. Awesome. So um, talking about jobs, about the opportunity from people, so, because we know that uh, Brooks uh, have the opportunity to bring a lot of a lot of people, no? For mm -hmm. for, um, for for you, uh, according to your point of view, what is the most important thing that bring more people to City of Brooks? Well, obviously, the number one factor for people to come here is for jobs. And, you know, we're fortunate we have a variety of jobs. And we, you know, our largest uh, employer locally is JBS Foods Canada. Um, they have done a great job of, um, you know, going out, recruiting people from around the world and, and making it a place where people want to, to come and work. And, you know, they, they have a great opportunities there. Part of that too, though, that goes hand in hand with going out and finding those people is that over the last couple decades, um, you know, we've established this um, community of, of people from around the world. 48% um, of the people in Brooks, in the city of Brooks, are uh, visible minor minorities. Um, I believe about 35% of them are um, new to Canada. They've immigrated here from... Um, First generation. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. So it's it's... Very unique. Um, there's probably no other community, especially our size in Canada, that has that kind of diversity, um, cultural and ethnic diversity. So I think as people view opportunities to come to Canada and look at jobs, um, we have that advantage that people will say, I can see other people like myself who speak my same language, 
who I can buy groceries in, in the store here, um, even though it's a, a smaller city. Um, you know, we, we allow um, people to feel more welcome here. And I think that's, that's probably um, next to having the jobs themselves is, is the key factor to, to attracting people. Yeah, so is uh, uh, any possibility to bring more companies here to Brooks? What are the advantages that maybe companies around the world can find here in the city of Brooks? Sure. So, um, you know, I deal actually on a regional basis. So I deal not only with the city of Brooks, but I also deal with the county of Newell and, and the municipalities in our area. So not just the 15,000 people within Brooks. I, I, I serve uh, the 25,000 people within our region. Um, and as part of that, uh, last year we were the first uh, community in Alberta to be um, nom or accepted into the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program. And there are essentially two streams there. Uh, one of them is a workforce stream that allows people to um, apply for jobs here. And with that, they, we will provide an endorsement for a provincial nomination uh, towards a, a, a permanent residency. Um, the other side of it, though, is the rural entrepreneur stream. And this allows um, businesses, um, business people from around the world to, to look at our community if they're interested in investing uh, within the Brooks Newell region, it doesn't have to be just in the city of Brooks, can be in the rural areas around or any of the communities like Bazano or Duchess or Rosemary. Um, they can look at investing in a business there. Um, and if, if we feel it's a business that, um, you know, it can be sustainable, viable, and, and uh, adds benefit to our community, we can also provide that community um, support letter, which allows them to apply to the program and, you um, become, uh, you know, entered into that immigration stream as well. It's a bit of a fast track. Perfect. So this is just related from people that would like to become um, uh, permanent resident That's right. using entrepreneur path. That's right. right. But uh, here, uh, when, let's say, for instance, people that they already have, they already are permanent resident, mm -hmm. uh, are they able to find um, programs in City of Brooks like to be to trainings that uh, help them to become entrepreneurs or, or, or become more efficient in sure. all these projects? Yeah, so, you know, my role, I can I can do one-on-one -on -one sort of support uh, helping, but um, I'm not a business coach and, and, that's, and I'm not a financial expert, um, but we do have resources for that. So we deal with a lot of organizations, uh, Community Futures, uh, Apex uh, Regional Innovation Network, uh, Business Link, uh, the, even the BDC, the Business Development Bank. Um, so what we do is provide connections for, for business people. So if a business person comes into us and says, you know, I've got this idea, I've got some funding here, but I little, need a little bit more, I need access to you know, uh, uh, properties or something like that, we can make those connections and, and help them find those connections. So we do have a lot of permanent residents already here. Um, we find that a lot of um, the new Canadians that we have here are very entrepreneurial. Um, they're very, uh, you know, um, positive when they when it comes to setting up their own business you, you drive around our community and you can see that there's, there's so many new businesses here that that have opened up and so we're able to provide support there we have grants for um you know beautification of a storefront we actually have a program that's uh, coming up here in december called new grow it's a um, business investment uh pitch competition so essentially if you've got a new business new idea you come to us and we've got um you know, it's similar to some of these television shows in Canada here. We've got the Dragon's Den and that, where, where you've got a group of judges that will look at your idea. Um, if they think it's a great idea, we can, we've can. we got money that can invest up to $10,000 uh, in, in, in your business idea. Well, that's amazing news, yeah. right? That is amazing. This is the kind of things that uh, sometimes uh, people don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and I think this is the wonderful opportunity to, to share this information. So... So basically, it's in a competition, mm -hmm. and people that uh, have a already a project, uh, yeah, an entrepreneur project, mm -hmm. so they're going to be able to share that project, and then you just, just can say if it's a... Um, it's a, a, a good way to, to support them, right? Yeah, for sure. It can be anything from a, a brand new operation to, to somebody who's already up and running and just wants to maybe bring in a new piece of equipment to provide something new. Um, for example, one of the, the more um, 
successful businesses that we've seen over the last year is a traditional meat market downtown uh, Brooks. Uh, they're coming, they were starting up, um, they had plans to start up and they had their funding in place. But, you know, anything that we could provide makes it just that much easier for them in the, that startup phase. So um, those kind of businesses where it's a brand new retail store, that's a great idea. But there's other uh, ideas too. There, you know, there could be anything from a stage for an entertainment or a um, uh, we've got one who is a firewood supplier. And so um, it doesn't really matter what the idea. It doesn't have to be a brick-and-mortar building, per se. Um, it can be, uh, you know, just an idea, a mobile business. Um, yeah. And, and that is a uh, wonderful uh, news because uh, this is uh, precisely the, the thing that we try to do in Asai Radio Global. Mm -hmm. So... We are um, originally from Colombia, mm -hmm. but uh, now we are based here in, in city of Brooks, and 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 the headquarters is actually here. Yeah. Brooks. So so we believe that this is wonderful city, um, and 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 then now um, that makes me wonder everything that you just said because when you say, for instance, that is lacking of business caution. Mm -hmm. Right, so that is the thing. Sometimes people have the idea, uh, they have a burning desire, mm -hmm. they would like to do something, sure, but they don't know how. Yeah, uh, any way or any plan in the future um, that work somehow for business coaching side. Yeah, so there are actually other programs that we can connect people with. You know, fortunately, in, in this day and age, we have everything from, um, you know, online courses to uh, pitch competitions or even accelerator programs. So an accelerator is, is something where if a person has a, an idea, um, a lot of times it's uh, tech-based tech or science-based, but it doesn't have to be. Um, it could be anything from a fashion idea to uh, a new way of uh, e-commerce. If you have that idea and you just need a little bit of help sort of getting it, you know, in a commercial form, um, we can connect you with a number of different programs. There, there's one called Thrive. It's it's an egg-based um, um, accelerator. So anything agricultural-based, if, if you've got a new way of, uh, you know, growing a crop or processing a product, um, actually here in, here in Brooks, because of the uh, multiculturalism, certain products aren't available. So if somebody wants to come in and say, you know, I've got this idea, this, um, I know there's a market for it here within Canada. Um, it's something that I've seen at home, but I want to bring to Canada. You know, we can help you sort of connect and, and, and commercialize that idea. Wow, that, that's good. So, so but, uh, the, and the question is because back in Colombia, uh, we, 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 have, uh, we have the opportunity to do business coaching. So, mm -hmm. so we have the opportunity to um, teach uh, people how really change the mindset. Mm -hmm. right? So, so you know, so usually uh, we buy the idea that um, you have to study, go uh, university, work for 40 years, mm -hmm. and that's a way for your retirement. Yeah. But when you go into the business entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial world, it's totally different. Yes. And, and, and that shift, that change between, between a, uh, having a job and go to um, try a business mm -hmm. uh, is, is always challenging, mm -hmm. right? So, so um, that is very good back because in the, in the future, um, if uh, we're going to um, have the opportunity to, to share with you guys um, a project that we have also related to business coaching, will be amazing. And, and, and I think we, we can be part of the solution. That's right. I mean, actually, yeah, if you, if you know of somebody or if you have an idea yourself, um, you know, it's a great way for you to work through it and understand how it is. And then you can also share that with other people. You know, this is the programs that I, I, I did and, and these are the resources available. And, and it's a great way to get that word out. So. Yeah, no, that I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write this topic because it's going to be really really important. Mm -hmm. So other 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 thing that we would like to see here, um, Mr. Iwasa, if I'm pronunciation yes. as well, right? Yeah, Iwasa, because yeah, uh, is um, how you see Brooks ten years from now. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so so the main challenge we're actually seeing right now. Um, we have the jobs. We have a very low unemployment rate, one of the lowest in Canada. I think it's around 3% and one of the lowest in Alberta, in fact, wow. um, in this area. Um, we have the people. Um, you know, we have access to people. We know that people want to move here. Um, so one of the big challenges we're facing right now is housing. 
and finding enough housing for everybody. Um, so we're, we're constantly working with, um, you know, we're talking to everything, realtors, uh, developers, landowners, trying to find, and also organizations and companies, um, you know, companies like JBS and, and other larger companies, um, you know, who, who need these workers. Um, one of their main challenges is housing for those workers. So, uh, you know, we have discussions with them, too, about how we can um, help them out. So over the next 10 years, I think a big focus, especially within the city of Brooks, is going to be housing. And uh, fortunately for us, we have a lot of uh, ready uh, land ready to be developed in the area. city owns a, a lot of land in the southeast sector of, of the city that is um, serviced and, and ready to go. So it's just a matter of finding people to build. Of course, building is a, is a difficult proposition these days, given building costs and finding trades to, to do the building. Um, but uh, that'll be sort of our one of our first main hurdles. Once we've done that, it really allows us to start marketing ourselves to the, uh, to the rest of the world and rest of Canada. Um, as a place to come and do business. Um, we're still relatively low cost housing, low cost of living, um, but we still feel we've got a great quality of life. Our diversity is, is again, a number one sort of um, attraction for people to come here. Um, we are unlike pretty much any other community. So um, as over the next 10 years, I think um, we'll need to see that housing develop, but that will be the lead to allow us to attract new businesses, diversify our economy, and, um, you know, expand what we can do here. Wow, excellent. So so we can say, uh, Mr. Aguasa, that COVID uh, just put a before and after uh, Brooks, or do you think you guys, how you guys basically handle that experience? Well, you know, like everywhere in the world, it was it was a huge challenge. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, sort of describe it as a, you know, before and after so much. It was, it was a challenge during it, and businesses face that. Um, you know, large manufacturing, manufacturers who have a lot of people working in, in a single location had to deal with the, the issues around COVID. And I think most of them were able to invest in, and find ways around it. Um, schools, of course, had those challenges as well, too. And, and you know, through, through online learning, it, it's been a way to, to um, adapt. Um, what I think it actually has done um, for us and everybody else is, is it allowed us to take a look at, and, and you talked about change and, and changing our mindset. Um, you know, I think it, it forced us to realize that we, there are different ways of doing business, whether it's through a computer, whether it's, um, you know, through e-commerce or, or whatever it is, um, there's different ways of doing it. So it, it, it allowed us to... Um, Realize those um, um, opportunities, actually, I think, is, is what you could say. Obviously, there was a huge cost involved in, in, in COVID and, and what happened there. But I think um, now we're more open to opportunities and ways of doing business. And, and I think that's hopefully where, where we, we're going. Perfect. And uh, speaking about that, uh, uh, I heard that we have a new internet in the city. Yeah. How's that experience? Sure. Actually, you know, I'm not overly familiar with it. I, I'm not part of that project, but uh, Brooksnet is um, nearing completion of, of the um, putting in the uh, fiber optic cables throughout the city. Um, once it's all completed, um, every business and, and uh, residents within the city will be able to access the Brooksnet. Um, how, how they like to describe it is Brooksnet is the highway. Um, whoever wants to come in and, and provide the services of, of the actual internet services, um, it's, op it's an open network. So um, right now we have Galaxy Fiber locally who's pr um, providing um, um, fiber optic uh, services um, and they've already hooked up a, a number of places. So from what we're hearing, the feedback is great. It's a great high speed service and, and very reliable. Um, that is one of the issues that we've had in the past is the reliability and speed of internet on a continual basis. Um, you know, there are certain businesses that really rely on um, on good, fast internet. And this actually is, again, another um, opportunity for us to, to market ourselves to uh, businesses to attract. Because probably, again, for a community our size, typically um, a lot of them may not have this, this level of internet service. Right. No, that, that is very important. 
And and we can say that because we 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 really need a good internet, mm -hmm. yes, fast, and, and we 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 work based on internet, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why um, I, I take this uh, value about this, uh, Mr. Iwasa. When when we are talking about um, safety and all of these things, how how are you do you think of City of Blues is a really good environment mm -hmm. for people coming in for newcomers and everything? How do you describe that part? So yeah, again, going back to my my past, I grew up here, um, feeling very safe in this community. Um, I was able to raise my three sons here, and um, like anything, there's when you've got a young population. Um, who, who make a good living, they've got money, you know, sometimes issues come up with that. But I think generally, I think you'd have to consider this as a great family community. We, we've, I've spoken to so many um, new Canadians and people that have moved here from other places. They, they just feel so welcome. And it's, it's something that you don't, um, you know, maybe think of when you, you think of Brooks. But when you do come here, I think it's because We're so used to people coming here, and we're so used to asking, where are you from, and, and what do you do? And, and, and it's, it's a very open community. Um, I just spoke with a gentleman who was looking through the Rural Entrepreneur um, um, stream um, from South Africa. And he'd come here, and, and he was coming here for what they call an uh, exploratory visit, just to sort of see the community, see if it's something that he'd want to invest in, and see if this is where he'd want to have his family, at a young family. And he goes, it's just so amazing coming here, you know, coming from a different background where, um, you know, when I walk down the street, I have to look over my shoulder or something like that. And, yes. and, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, you don't have to feel that way. It was, it's great. Uh, I was just, uh, I live over on, on one side of the city near um, the new JBS Canada Park. Uh, JBS Canada was very generous in donating uh, a large sum of money to uh, a park on the east side of the city uh, to help redevelop it and, and bring it up to bring some more recreational activities there. And it was a cold evening and it was getting dark, but there were still a lot of kids out there. You know, it's it's a lot of an area where a lot of newcomers moved to Brooks. There's apartment buildings and, and rental properties. And a lot of times those rental properties don't have a lot of a, a yard to play in, but these kids, it's, it's like their backyard. Wow. So, um, yeah, and it's nice to see. I, I, during the summers, I, I, you, through the neighborhood, you can just hear kids laughing and playing out, out, outside all, all night long. So it, it's that, great. That's really good because this interview right now, you know, we can say that um, uh, we are live with Argentina, Mexico, mm -hmm. um, Colombia, And even in Pakistan as well. So, 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 and it's very good that people can see how is the environment that we have yeah. here. You no, know? how, 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 how beautiful is have a peace of mind to yeah. grow whatever project we have. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So the other question that I have for you is: um, Do we have currently uh, events that uh, get uh, together business owner companies and share? Do, do we have some kind of events? Here? Yeah. So actually, if you visit our, our website brooksregion.ca, um, we've got a number of uh, programs and and uh, a lot of the events that we have. Also follow us on our social media on Facebook and and uh, Instagram. Um, so the Ones that we get that are, are, are really great networking uh, events are our business to business or B2B as we like to call them. Um, they are held about once a month. Um, generally, they're, they're free to attend. Um, we'll offer a light uh, meal and, and it's, sometimes we'll have a topic of discussion about whether it's uh, uh, workforce or whether it's um, HR, human resources uh, um, challenges, um, marketing, digital marketing, uh, working on your website. Um, so we'll have a general topic of that, but we like to keep it sort of informal. And it's more for business people to come and meet other business people oh. and trade business cards and find out what they're doing and find out what we're doing and, and, and just sort of share ideas. So those business to business events, again, they're, they're on our social media. So anybody can attend those, and, and they're free. it's uh, we we welcome. Are, are they on regular basis? So how yeah, that works? Yeah, yeah. It, it we try to have them about once every month or two. So it's it's a sort of a irregular, you know, schedule as we we find a topic and maybe we have a speaker or a location that we want to go to, and so we'll move them around. So it'll be generally in one restaurant or at the golf course or someplace like that. So. Yeah. Okay. That, so, that, so, so we like to keep people on their toes. They have to f try and find us. <laughs> so, we yeah, because maybe yeah. this is the other challenge thing: be, uh, find people to bring uh, value, value to, to the business owner, and, and yeah, that's that's good. So, um, and, and and this is part of the uh, part of the role of your uh, your 
or your uh, office uh, like mm-hmm. try to to develop all of this uh, information for the business software, right? Yeah, for sure. And and really, you know, we always um, what we'd recommend if you've got an idea and you want to try and develop, just give us a call or shoot us an email. Uh, we're happy to sit down with you and just sort of talk about what your idea is and maybe give you some suggestions and a few uh, people to contact and, and uh, you know, just start that process that way. That's very good, very good. Okay, so Mr. Aguasa, um, um, uh, just to, to, to um, try to wrap it up. So um, here in Brooks, so um, we have a wonderful opportunity with uh, a big lands, mm-hmm. very good uh, water, uh, and, and, and we know that... Uh, um, this area, uh, this is the more attractive thing or, or attractive uh, things or brooks. So the environment, right? Mm-hmm. So, so when you guys are the, doing the planning, mm-hmm. the planning is any project um, long term that uh, can bring more companies into the brooks or. Yeah, so, you know, we, we, we just attended a uh, International Federation of Ag Journalists uh, conference in Oles um, earlier this summer. And what we focused on there were, were sort of four themes. It was, and because it was agriculture, it was land, water, people, and energy. Um, you know, of course, people are our are, are number one asset, what we've got here. When we look to the future, you know, um, this area has been traditionally an agricultural um based economy. Um, JBS has come in uh, as a manufacturing food processing um, uh, business that is is strengthened our economy. And then the other thing that over the last 40 or 50 years that has been a major factor is has been the oil and gas uh, petroleum industry. Um, As we know, um, you know, the world is becoming greener. Um, Renewable energy is is becoming a, a, a hot topic. We have a couple solar farms already here in this area. Um, so if there is an area of investment or area of expansion, um, fortunately for us, we're one of the sunniest places in Canada too. Oh, right. We have like 330 sun days uh, a year. Um, so um, solar farms have been a big thing. But other s- forms of renewable energy are, are uh, um, major drivers, I think, of the economy looking forward. Um, we can look at everything from, you know, there's wind, there's, uh, and all the manufacturing processes that go along with it. Um, but everything from hydrogen to waste energy, uh, which is a, another big project, which is uh, located here that, that they're exploring. So technology and, and energy is, is, is a, a big area of expansion. Every area. Okay. And, and what is the support that you guys receive from oil and gas sector? Well, oil and gas is, again, has been the, such a, Huge benefit for our area. Um, the the tax revenue for the county um, from the oil and gas facilities infrastructure that's that's in our area has been um, a huge uh, you know revenue generator for it. Right. Um, the number of people that that work in the oil and gas and, uh, industry they are um, highly paid, well paid, and and they've been the backbone of our community community over the last uh, few decades. And then also um, just the companies themselves. Uh, We have a number of large oil companies that deal in this area, and they've been great community supporters, donating to uh, a number of uh, facilities around the area. Wow. No, that's good. I think, uh, okay, so just the, I think the last question, Mr. Aguasa, is, um, so, so, if you if you want to give advice for the new generation, mm-hmm. right? So let's say, what is your advice that you think uh, um, prefer to give then, uh, uh, and generally speaking, to you, to, 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 to let's say, for your kids? Or yes, that's right. Yeah. What well, is, it, it is actually something very relevant because uh, I have three sons, and the youngest is, is just 21 years old. So they're at that stage where they're, going out, uh, either going to school or just starting careers, uh, starting families. Um, you know, the one advice I give to them is that there is opportunity out there. You have to go find it, but it's not nearly as hard to find as it used to be. This, the computer and the internet is, is a great connection. Um, so be open-minded to what you can do. Um, you know, if you want to go to university, that's great. If you want to go to a trade school, that's great. If you want to figure out yourself, that's great. Um, not to say that you want to take your uh, entire youth and, and be looking, but you know, be open to it. Give it a try. See how it goes, and um, you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes. Um, so you know, give it a try. Um, 
see see what's out there and and really follow something do something to, that, that's passionate to you that you want to uh, do yourself i think it's so much important what you just said because when, when we just keep in mind that failure is a uh, brick that we can build to sex that's right it's totally per different perspective and also passion mm -hmm. passion is very important that's because right. we can connect passion mm -hmm. purpose and and, and 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 then create abundance and and it, i think a very very nice um advice for for for, for the next generation uh, mr aguasa i just want to say thank you so much and i hope that this is not the first time not the last time but sorry the first time it is but not the last time that we are here to share with you uh, and share with, uh, with all your knowledge and uh, hopefully we're going to have a, another another interview that uh, we'll see what happened in city we can what is the thing that we can share with the community for sure thank you so much great. for being here well, any other last thing that you know that'll say? be great I'd, I'd love to come back at some point in time and tell you about some of our success stories as well Perfect. Thank you so much. It was Carlo Di Castillo here in Radio Global. And uh, we have the privilege to have today Mr. Aiwasa, Officer of the Development... Economic of Development. Economic Development here in City of Brooks. Thank you so much, Mr. Aiwasa. Thank you. Thank you.